Now going over to the business blunder of the day, you have Disney doubling Bob Iger's compensation, their CEO, and the stock is still down and the problems are still here. So Disney used to be one of the most, and again, they still have a, they're still making more money than we can possibly comprehend. But they used to be one of the most successful businesses in Americana history. They used to appeal to everyone. They didn't try to go after a niche or alienate any customers or fans. And then they thought, you know what? Let's get into politics. Let's start pushing gender identity. Let's start introducing children to sexual themes. Someone at the company thought that was a good idea. And they built a culture around that. And they hired people with that mentality in mind while pushing away and alienating the conservative folks who worked in the company. And also the folks in the middle who just didn't want to glorify sexual things like that in front of children. And the stock market and the box office has shown. It was the first time, I believe, it was it 14, 15 years, they lost the throne of the top box uh, office creator. I believe it was, they lost to Universal in 2023. They also lost over a billion dollars at the box office in 2023, which for Disney, I mean, wind back the clock 20 years ago, that would have been laughable. You would have thought someone is insane if they said that. Because historically speaking, they had a track record for basically printing money legally. It was just astronomical success. They would always knock it out of the park because again, they were appealing to the mass audience. They weren't alienating anyone or pushing anything. And then Bob Iger came in. He did build up the copy quite well. He acquired Lucasfilm as well as Marvel. And you could debate, well, they also destroyed those movies with um, inserting political metaphors and Kathleen Kennedy, she still has a job somehow. So he did good in terms of he acquired those intellectual properties, which has a lot of potential. Then he handed off the reins to Bob Chapek, who is his protege. And then things got worse. He increased the rates of the parks so people could barely afford it. They took away value from the parks. They went made worse movies. And Bob Iger came back about a little over a year ago. And it's one of those instances where he hasn't turned the company around. And I'm really skeptical to think he even could because of the culture they built in Disney and the people they employ and that they've recruited at Disney. It's not just a one-person problem. The CEO has a huge influence on the company, but there's a, he's outnumbered. And looking at the total compensation package, it looks like they doubled it from $15 million. million. And again, they're not paying him cash. This is a variable mixed contribution where is usually, like most executive salaries, it's usually a, not even half cash. It's usually a fraction. Usually, I want to say even 10 to 20% cash. But then the majority of it is in stock options, healthcare benefits, a myriad of other benefits. And his compensation apparently last year was $15 million. And let's pull up his stock. I mean, maybe it's justified because of stock. I mean, it's not, spoiler alert. But if you look at the total stock market trend for Disney, let's do five-year trends so we can look at the when he took over. So let's pull up a quick search on when did he when did Bob Iger come back? Because the date eludes me at the moment. I want to try to use, give you as much accurate information as possible. Back to Disney. So Bob Iger came back. February. Bob Iger, CEO. 2022? So February, December, January. Uh, so it's eh, it's hard to play the stock chart. But let's go February, February 4th, 2022. Their stock was $142.02 per share, which, again, it's still the five years, still negative, but still, that's something. $142.02 per share. It's now trading at $90.34 per share. So, in the past one year trend, it's down negative 8.78%. Year to date, it's about even. Granted, it's only been a couple of weeks. If you have a six month trend, it's actually increased 5.11. Past month is down 2.71%. Past five days about break even. But they haven't been doing good in the stock market. They're starting to lose control in terms of, let's see here. They just also rejected, let's see here, Nelson Putz and some investors who wanted to actually get them out of politics. So that kind of reaffirms my, my theory that they're going to keep pushing this ideological material that's alienating a large portion of their what used to be former clients and ironically creating their own competition we have things like bent key ventures exponentially increasing their production capabilities they're owned by the daily wire headquartered in nashville tennessee they say they're the fastest conservative media company uh growing conservative media company in the u.s or probably in the globe and their whole animation studio was inspired because of disney 
So because of Disney's business ineptitudes, Daily Wire is starting to make their own original content. And because so many consumers are feel alienated by Disney, they're seeking out alternatives. So they're quite literally creating their own competition and fueling their own competition by alienating so many current and prospective clients. Now, it looks like in terms of Disney unveiling their 12 board nominees, they rejected Pelt's, uh, sorry, Pelt's proxy push. Again, Nelson, Nelson Peltz has been buying up more and more stock of, of Disney to try to get some more board, seats on the board of directors and try to get them out of politics. If you look at Mr. Putz's long-term career, he has invested in multiple companies and he's acquired seats on the board of directors to help to influence the company. And they, historically, he's got them out of politics to more focus on their core competencies, AKA making a product that is marketed towards the masses, which for an overwhelming majority of businesses, I would argue that's the most profitable, most logical one. Now, it looks like Disney unveiled their slate of 12 board director nominees, and they also snubbed Train Fund Management CEO Nelson Plus Activist Investor Campaign after his bid for a seat fell short. The new additions include leaders from General Motors, Lulubon, I get, Lulubon has increased their stock exponentially, so okay, there's a little big success there. I don't know about General Motors. Let's see here. And Morgan Stanley. Let's see here. The board refresh, and this is a little excerpt from Yahoo Finance. They say the board refresh comes as Disney CEO Bob Iger continues to prioritize streaming investments and transform ESPN into a content juggernaut. Won't happen. ESPN used to be, a, it is still important to the company. It makes a huge profit margin for Disney, so it's important. But it's also been decreasing over the long term because, again, it used to be a sports balls program. But then they decided to get into politics and, again, have their news anchors talk about things that have nothing to rate with sports balls. And sports was kind of the final frontier in terms of a final area where it was very apolitical. No one wanted to talk politics. It's just about the sports balls and catching pig skins and making touchbacks, or whatever the youth call it these days. And then they decided to make it a politic thing because short term that did spike the ratings and kind of fueled that idea that it was a good thing. However, long term it's been more detrimental if you have decreasing viewership on that platform and on that service. And again, their streaming services are still losing money. Granted, most streaming services do for quite some time, and they are decreasing, or rather, the amount of losses are not as great as they used to be. I mean, last fiscal year, they are losing billions of dollars. The last fiscal quarter, I believe they lost, I would say only, still a lot, but not relative to the losing billions, it is better. They lost about, I believe, $483 million. So they're moving in the right direction, fiscally speaking, for the streaming service. That's, it should probably also help since they spent a couple billion dollars, I think it's $30 billion, writing a check to Comcast to buy the remaining shares of Hulu. So now Disney, instead of owning 66.66%, now own 100% of Hulu. And it'll be interesting to see if that, if they could, they say they're gonna have two separate outlets on your phone for now, or you know, apps for now. It'll be interesting to see if long-term they just merged all into Disney Plus, I think it would most likely make more sense. That may very well make help bolster the attempt to get to a profitability. But again, I mean, I just don't see the performance that would warrant such a big reward for Bob Iger. Because again, the underlying problems for the company are still very much there. And even though he has publicly said multiple times he wants to get out of politics, he and his protege built a culture of pushing politics. If you look at who's in charge of Star Wars, they're still pushing political ideals, which again are alienating a lot of the hardcore fans, a lot of the people in the middle who don't, they don't want a political product, they just want something to unplug and enjoy for a couple hours. So I'd say we're giving him such a great, it's they gave him such a great fiscal and total compensation package. And he has a track record of success. He, in terms of work ethic, I, excuse me, <clears throat> I very much admire Bob Iger. He started off by sweeping floors at ABC studios, which Disney subsequently bought. And he worked like hell to climb up the corporate ladder. He has great phenomenal work ethic and he's built the business successful in many ways. I don't think the methodologies he's using, and again, maybe there's some huge arguments behind closed doors we're not privy to right now, and he's trying his best to change it in the background, but I don't see their plan of success yet. They're still losing money on streaming. They're not changing the methodology for streaming. They actually deep, they were, at least they're number one or number two streaming platform in terms of cutting content from the streaming platform in 2023. So let me in the comments if you think this is the right direction for Disney, but with all the information we currently, all the public information we currently have at hand, I would still say, you know, doubling his compensation at this time, that's certainly got to be the business blunder of the day. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in again today. 
trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of January. So click that button and greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a like or a comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better, improve the quality over time. Also, and lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.